Hey everyone, I'm taking over from Mark today because in this video we're going to be covering the tenor drum. So we're going to start off figuring out how to put on our mallets. After that's all sorted, we're going to start playing the drum, then go on to our uh, basic flourishing, starting with our four key rotations. After that we're going to do some sequences, some eight beats and four beats. We'll, uh, I'll teach you some tricks. And then once we've got all of that, we'll put it all together in a routine that we can use uh, once a day or so. To, uh, twice, three times through, once a day, and that will uh, keep in practice everything that you have learned in this video. And hopefully when everything is all sorted out and we can start meeting up a band again, um, we will all be pro tenor drummers. So let's get started and how to put on the mallets. So how are we going to put on our tenor drum mallets? First, what we want to do is we need to take the hand we're going to hold the mallet in, spread it nice and wide apart, and then have it palm facing upwards in front of us. In your other hand, hold the mallet by the loop and put the whole thing in between the gap between these two fingers, your two littlest fingers. Okay, the whole thing in, in between the gap. Then we want to widen the loop, curl our fingers back through the loop, move the loop away from you still with our right hand, and then when it's down by our knuckle, let go, and it will just drop. Give a little tug to secure it, and this is now attached to our hand. It won't, it's not gonna go anywhere. Next, what we're gonna do, grab the mallet again, move the, this loop in the middle, over to the far side of your middle finger, and then over the top of your index finger. Okay, the way to tell if it's in the correct position, if you have your hands like this in front of you, you can see it's at about a 45 degree angle. This is also the way you can measure whether or not your strings are tight enough. You can see these strings are slightly loose because it's a little bit lower than 45 degrees. So that down there will be a very loose string. Up there will be a very, up there will be a very tight string. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing with our other hand now. Remember, we can completely let go of this mallet. Palm facing up, loop comes through. Move the loop round, let it go, tug it down. Okay, now this time, instead of doing this, we could do a bit quicker method if we make a finger gun and then do this whilst letting go of the mallet like that. Then we'll throw it around and do the same job as long as it's a one fingered gun. Because if we do that, can you see it falls to the far side of your middle finger naturally and over the top of your index finger? And we can check it is in the correct position. So all we need to do when we're putting on our sticks, get into this position, secure both hands, make two finger guns, one, two, and then we've got our sticks ready to hold. So when we're holding the stick, there oh, it might be a little black bit at the end. Some mallets have a ball at the end as well. You want to hold finger and thumb just above where that black bit is, okay? These three fingers aren't going to do anything. They're going to be closed, so obviously we can support it, but the holding and all the main work is done in your finger and thumb, okay? So, and our, finally, our ready position for the tenor drum sticks like that, crossed, your right stick is further away than your left stick, arm straight out in front of you. So now we're ready to play the drum. So playing the tenor drum, if you're part of the second Wistable Sea Scouts and you're learning the tenor drum, then for the most part you'll be playing on the same time as the bass drum. So when we're on the march, whenever the, uh, your foot hits the floor, then your mallet will hit your tenor drum. So left, 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 right, left, okay? You'll also need to give the same signals as the bass drum. So the halt, the step off, and the cut off, and we will go through those now, okay? The halt signal, when we're going to keep playing, but we're going to stop marching. Okay, so that will be two big bangs. These to be nice and loud so the whole bang can hear. Two misses and then two bangs in quick succession. Okay, like so. Left, left, and the signal's given. Bang, bang, miss, miss, bang, bang. And then we would keep playing. We'd just stop moving, okay? When we're at the halt, still playing, we want to step off again. We'll get the step off signal. Sounds very similar to a cut off, so don't get them confused, okay? We've got... Bang, 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 okay? So, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And then we start moving again, okay? The cutoff you should be very familiar with. The tricky part about this is learning the timing, because you need to time the third beat at the end of the cutoff, 
with the very last note on the song. So you need to learn when to start the cutoff signal. Okay, but it's something you should be familiar with. One, two, one, one, two, three. And then we go back into our ready stance, which is this. So arms straight out in front of you, like so. Sticks crossed, right stick is further away than your left stick, okay? And then obviously we're gonna do after the cutoff, we're gonna do our three beats, same as the bass drum. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and left, 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 right, left, and so on, because we're now into song. Okay, when we're actually hitting the drum, the volume isn't important. You don't need to be really, you don't need to be wailing on your tenor drum. You'll get the same note, essentially, if you hit it softly like this, than if you do, if you're really going, going ham on your drum, okay? It's more about accenting the bass drum, because the bass drum is a lot louder than our drum, so we're giving it a boom as opposed to a thwack, and we're also there for flourishing. We're not there as the main musical piece, so don't worry. If you, if you end up missing a note, got not a problem, just keep playing. Uh, but what it is it crucially important to do is if you're slipping away from the bass drum, follow the bass drum or stop playing and then catch up with the bass drum again because they sound quite similar, tenor and bass drums. If you end up playing two diff a different time with the bass drum, the whole band is thrown off. Okay, so there's not a problem. We're just stopping playing for a little bit, for a bit, listen to the bass drum and then get back into that rhythm again. Okay. Okay, so in our flourishing, we have four key rotations that we need to have a very good grounding of in order to progress the tenor skill set further, okay? And these will form the foundation. So it's really important to get a very good, strong foundation that you're completely comfortable with and that becomes muscle memory, okay? If you don't have to think about it, that means you can think about several other things because when we're playing the tenor drum, we've got to think about the actual hitting of the drum, we've got to think about marching, dressing, when the cutoff is coming, etc. So having one less thing to think about really does help. Okay, so our four basic rotations are inside forward, inside reverse, outside forward, outside reverse. Okay, the inside and outside is in relation to your hand. So this is the outside, this is the inside. Okay, inside, outside. If it's going away from you, then it's a forward rotation. If it's going towards you, then it's a reverse rotation. Okay. The key rotation is outside reverse. That's the one that we're gonna be using the most and it's the one that we'll default to in this video whenever we say do a flourish. So that's the one that you will use more than any other, okay? Whenever we do a rotation, the first important step is giving it momentum. If we don't give it any momentum, we can't catch it again. It needs to go all the way around, okay? There are two ways you can do this. You can either throw the stick one way and then the other. So for an outside, for a reverse rotation, throw it like that. This is outside reverse, like that. Or we can flick it with the two fingers that are holding the stick, okay? So for a reverse, our thumb on the very end of the stick is gonna pull down. At the same time as our index finger is gonna push up like this, okay? And if we do that, pop up. You can see the stick is popping in a reverse towards me, okay? If we're going to do forwards, then it's the opposite. We have this finger pulling down and your thumb pushing up, like so. And you will see it's going away. Okay, so forward, reverse. Okay, or equally, reverse, forward. All right, so once we've given it that initial momentum, we want to position our wrist and, and the positioning of the wrist will determine whether it's an inside or an outside rotation, okay? If we have a flat wrist, like a knife, then it's gonna be an inside rotation because that's where the mallet will naturally go, okay? Like so. This is inside. Can you see it's a nice flat hand? If our hand's not flat, then we'll end up catching the mallet on our own fingers, which will completely kill the rotation, and you either have to start it up again or start a whole new sequence which gets you out of time, okay? So it's crucial, you have a nice flat hand, okay? Well, if we're doing an outside rotation, we want to bend our wrist like this, okay? The bend of the wrist, we drop our wrist down with the stick, dropping the wrist down with the stick, then that will encourage the stick to go on the outside of our hand, okay? The bend in the wrist is very important. If you're not bending enough, then you will hit yourself in the arm. 
okay? Really important, drop your wrist. Drop the wrist, okay? Obviously, I was exaggerating a little bit there. You don't have to drop your whole arm, but it's just drop the wrist like that, okay? So now that we know, we can combine them around, okay? So an inside forward, we're gonna have a flat hand with forwards momentum. Put the two together, inside forwards. Inside reverse, we're doing the same thing, but we're popping reverse towards us with a knife hand, okay? Like that, it's the same thing. And we can mix and match. So an outside reverse, throwing it forwards, dropping the wrist, outside reverse. Okay, inside reverse, oh, sorry, outside reverse, like that, that was outside forward, I just did then. So outside reverse like that, outside forward like that. Okay, to catch it, if we go from a closed hand to an open hand like that, can you see how it's moving the mallet like that? Yeah, that will pull the mallet back into your hand. Okay, so when we're spinning, open, 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 and it's pulling it back in. And then we just need to get the timing of when we close our finger and thumb, that will come with practice. It's just getting the timing right of when we snap the finger and thumb shut to close. Okay, once we've got one rotation going down, we can do multiple, okay? That's all in the wrist, you just keep it going. So keep, oops, I hit the table. Keep dropping the wrist and then flicking it back up again if we're doing an outside. If we're, in the, if we're on the inside, do this with your hand. All in the wrist, okay? And that will keep it going. Once we're comfortable with that, we can keep the rotation going. We can catch it whenever we like. Just again, by opening the hand and snapping the fingers shut, okay? So those are our four rotations. There's one more thing we need to do for basic tenor drumming and that is splitting the feather, which is a double outside reverse where your wrists are close together like this. Okay? Now, the way we do that, we want our two outside reverse flourishes. We don't want them going on like this at the same time because if we do, we move our wrists together, then they will hit each other, okay? The way to get around that is if we start the rotations within a split second of each other at a slightly different time, okay? One, two. One, two. And then that does it for us, okay? Keep, I keep it at the table. One, two. And then catch, and then we keep going to hit the drum, okay? So, once we've got the timing going, in our two separate hands, all we need to do, keep that bend going and close our wrists together. Close the wrists, okay? And, that's all. and then we can speed it up to make it look a bit fancier. Okay, so when we're doing our three beat rolls on the tenor drum, there are two ways we can do it. The first off is the same way as the bass drum does it. So, one, two, three. One, two, three and then go into your marching. The second one, once we get more comfortable with flourishing, we can do a fancier way, which looks like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so going over that a little bit more slowly. First hand, hit the drum. That comes up doing your standard outside reverse. Two, normal hit, and then catch, just before you get to three, together, three, Split the feather for the gap. Catch the other hand this time. One, two, three. Okay. So we'll do it one, once more slowly. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Now, of course, you can do. Yeah, so you can do split the feather like this, going gradually upwards, or you can just go like that, it doesn't matter. Your choice. Okay, so now we'll do it once more quickly. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then you would start into your plane. Okay, so the first trick we are going to do is called the pinwheel, and it looks like this. Okay, so how do we do a pinwheel? It's quite simple. All a pinwheel is, is like splitting the feather. 
but we are using our inside forwards rotations on both hands, okay? So the timing is the exact same, the split the feather, as in one, two, one, two, one, two, like this. And similar to splitting the feather, you want to start the rotation slightly differently, so bang, bang. One, two. And the cool thing about this trick, you, you don't actually have to spin very fast. I'm not going very fast at all now, and I can just move this around. And I'll go at the same speed. I'm really not going very fast. Of course, you can speed it up, and then it can look very fast indeed. Which is quite a nice looking trick. Okay. So, quite a nice, easy trick to get yourself started with. Okay, the next trick we're going to look at is called the pop, and this is the one we can use to really accentuate and make our cutoff signals look very nice. So, a pop with a cutoff looks like this. One, two, three. Okay, so how do we do a pop? With both hands at the same time, we're going to flip out that way. So I'll get a bit close to the camera now. So we're starting in this position in both of our hands. I'll just show you with one hand for now. At the same time, we want to throw it this way and catch. Throw and catch. Okay, so flick it around and catch it. Your thumb is facing downwards, so that's very important. Thumb facing down in both hands till we get to here, here. And we would have our arms all the way out here. Obviously, you can't see them on the camera, so I'm going to do it in here. Okay. Next stage, there are two, we then need to get to the center like this. So we are ready to hit, hit the drum. Okay. <clears throat> there are two ways we can do this. We can either go from here to here. You can do however many rotations you want. To there, like that. Okay. Or we can do this. Oop, he says getting it wrong. You can do this, toss it forwards like that, and then do outside forward, inside forward, like that. One, two, three. This is slightly harder. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna stick with back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? So, we, once we can do that in both hands, we're, we're gonna try and get the timing. One, two, three. Okay, the timing is one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so one, two, catch, three. And then once we can do it in both hands, one, two, three. One, two, three. Then, we want, then we're just going to do it both hands at the same time, crossing the sticks in our ready position. Bang. And then one, and then we can, once we can do that one two three one two three okay once we can do that start adding in the cut off signal okay so one two one one two three okay the last trick we're going to go over is called the butterfly just like this okay so and, and first off, in order to do the butterfly, we need to perfect one skill first, okay? So all it is, is we're doing an outside forward, inside forward, outside forward, and inside forward, with both hands at the same time, one following the other. So the way we're doing this, look what my wrist is doing, is going outside to in, out and in, out and in. And that movement of the wrist is transferring the rotation from this to this, okay? Then we're going to do that with both hands. Okay. Once we can do it vertically, we're then going to do it horizontally like this. Okay. Again, it's the movement of the wrist. So this time, instead of side to side, it's going up and down. And if you give it a little flick, then that will help keep the momentum because obviously when we're doing this, 
it's gaining momentum itself. I'm not having to really move it very much. Obviously, if I want to go faster, then I have to use have, my wrist has to be a bit more active. But this one, you do need an active wrist, just flicking the wrist up and down to keep that moving round. Okay. Now, with the other one, we're going to have to do it in reverse. So we're, they're both going in this direction, which for me is anti-clockwise. Okay. So it's the reverse. Okay, and all we're going to do is put them together again with the same timing. With the same timing, you want to go one, two, and I find it easier. Put your hands together. The stick that you're going to throw first, the one that goes over like this, which for me is my right hand. My right, I'm going to put my hand like that. My right hand goes first, then my left. And then it naturally flows like this. It naturally flows over in that movement, okay. So right, left. Okay. Okay, so now we know how to play the drum. We've learned some flourishing. We've learned some basic tricks. We can start putting it all together. So. What we're going to do, we're going to first go through some what we call sequences, then we're going to go through the standard 8-beat, and then we're going to go through a drill um, called a sequence, where you go through everything you've learned uh, in one sequence, and then you can repeat it. Okay, and just doing that a couple of times a day will keep you in practice. But first, we'll go through sequence. So, if you could pat your head and rub your tummy, you should be quite good at this if you could follow a tenor drum. So, uh, first we'll do an 8-beat sequence, or an 8-beat. So, one mallet is hitting the drum in time with the bass, while the other one is flourishing that standard outside reverse, okay? So, like so. So, with an 8 beat, when we reach 8 beats on the drum, on the, on the 8, 8, catch, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? And once we get to 16, with 8, because the multiples we use, we use 8, four, two, and one, because they all go up to 16. When we reach the number 16, then we swap and we go one lower in this in the sequence, okay? So we've done eight beats, four beats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Two beats, again, same principle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one beats as well, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So, that is our seat. What we can do now is what we call a sequence. So, we go up to 16 with eight beats. Then once we've reached 16, we go to 16 with four beats. And then we go to 16 with two beats. And then with one beat. Okay? So, we'll start that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, into fours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, twos, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, ones, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so that's our sequence. Now we can do our standard eight beat, which is as follows one, two, three, four, catch, five, six, two sticks together, seven. Split the feather for eight, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And that pattern there, the one that we have just done, that is going to be your default sequence when we're on the march and you've not been assigned something else, okay? That's what we're going to constantly be doing until told otherwise, okay? So, 
but now we can implement some tricks into our routine and do absolutely everything we've learned, okay? So, we start at the ready position. As soon as we want to go, we do our rolls. So, just to recap, one, two, three. One, two, three. And then we're going to go into an eight beat sequence, okay? The one that we've just done. Then we're going to go to uh, do eight beats, four beats, two beats, one beats, all the way to 16. As soon as we've done that, we're going to do a couple of hits on the drum and then into the tricks that we've learned, okay? So a couple of hits into a pinwheel, a couple of hits into a pop, a couple of hits into a butterfly, and then we're going to do a cutoff signal. Okay, a little bit complicated, but we'll give it a go. So, ready position. Rolls first. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now one, two, three, go to 16. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, fours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, twos, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, ones, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, now into a pinwheel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and pop, hop, 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 and keep going. Finally, a butterfly. One, two, three, four, and catch, and then a cut off. Okay, so now we've got all the basics. We've covered holding the sticks, we've covered playing the drum, we've done some flourishing with our four key rotations, we've done some sequences and we've put them all together and then we've added some little tricks on in the end as well. And finally, we've just gone through some practice sequences that you can go through just to get yourself more familiar and keep yourself in touch. So if you just do one, of those one or two of those sequences a day, keep yourself in practice and then by the time you're playing with the band, when all of the uh, current uh, events have, have been resolved, then we should be having a few Teledrum pros in the band.